Okay, I guess we're live. Uh, the 90-day challenge is over. Uh, that doesn't, doesn't mean that we stop uh, studying language. By the way, I'm going to try to get my screen up because I'm going to share some things with you here. Just hold on a sec. Where are we? Here we go. And, um, yeah, okay. So, you know, 90 days, I studied harder in these 90 days than I normally would. Uh, I assigned myself the task of working on two languages. I'm not sure I would do that again, but you never know. One thing about these 90-day challenges, we learn about a language, we learn more about a language, really get our noses into the language. Uh, we also learn about ourselves. We learn about what we like to do. Uh, we learn... Uh, new approaches to language learning. We maybe get some different perspectives on language learning and some of those things I'm going to share with you uh, today. So uh, I did my, call it exit interview in Arabic uh, last time and I have a, a session with my, uh, one of my Farsi or Persian tutors at 11 and I'm going to record myself. Oh, I forgot to bring my phone up here. Uh, talking to her so that you can get a sense of what I have achieved, have achieved in, uh, in uh, Persian. So what did we learn or what did I learn and what am I going to take from that going forward? So one of the things that happened with uh, my, both my Arabic and Persian, uh, first of all, let's, let's take one thing right away and dismiss it. And that's the thought that somehow when we are older, uh, we can't learn languages. Uh, I have said this many times. I'm a better language or learner now at the age of 73 than I was at the age of 20. I am learning languages faster for two reasons. One, because I'm more confident that I can do it. I have a better sense of how to go about doing it. And B, the uh, technology, uh, the availability of content, uh, it's just so much better now. And uh, in particular, I have found that in my last three or four languages that, as I've said again, I've said before, I find the mini stories a very powerful way uh, to get where you can actually start saying something in a language. Now, this brings me to one of my observations. In Arabic and Persian, I have been much more sort of, let's say, reluctant, or I have found it more difficult to move out of the sort of beginner environment or beginner to early intermediate material uh, into more demanding material. So when I was learning um, even Romanian, but certainly um, Czech or Polish, uh, I was able to get into, uh, you know, the wonderful Tolki Cesco Minlosti, which is this Czech series on Czech radio about Czech history. Uh, and with Russian, I was into Russian audiobooks very early and, and Turgenev and Tolstoy and stuff. So I was moving into meaty things earlier. I was even listening to a Romanian podcast on Romanian history and able to get, you know, a fair amount of it after a couple of months. None of this has been true with Arabic and Persian. And I think there are a number of reasons for that. And I'm going to show you, you know, my um, progression in different languages. And you can compare that to your own experience. The Arabic script is difficult because it's not one-to-one -one like Spanish or even Hangul in Korean, where once you know the writing system, if you see the word, you can read it, you can pronounce it. It's not so easy. So it's taking me a long time to get used to um, reading in those languages. I continue to struggle. I continue to make mistakes. I continue to pronounce them wrong. With Arabic, I have the advantage that we have text-to-speech. However inaccurate the text-to-speech is, it gives me a sense of how to pronounce the word. I can then confirm the pronunciation when I listen to the natural voice. But in Persian, we don't have that. So harder to read. Also, in any European language, there are so many freebie words. Now, that was less the case when I did my first Slavic language, Russian. Although even in Russian, there are a lot of words that are from other European languages, whether Latin or and Greek or French or German. So there are words there that help you. Uh, 
Persian. The only advantage in Persian is that there are a lot of words from Arabic. So that helps. So it's more difficult to move into more challenging material. Um, and so I, I felt I wanted to kind of improve my basic level more. I wanted to read more. I wanted to get better at reading all of this so that spending, I was spending more time in warming up for eventually attacking more difficult material. And also I wanted to be able to speak better. This is never something that's been a preoccupation before because in these other languages, I'm confident that if I, you know, push forward, I will eventually be able to speak well. But here I felt I wanted to consolidate what I had uh, before moving forward. Be and it was more difficult to move forward. So that's one thing that happened to me in Persian and Greek. I am sure that in doing that, uh, you know, one tends to move in the direction of the least resistance. If it's not difficult to move forward, if I can grab a Polish audiobook and ebook and basically know a lot of the words from Ukrainian, Russian, Czech, that's, that's kind of the line of least resistance. If I find a lot of resistance in moving towards more difficult material, then I tend to stay with the easier stuff. And I should say that I have listened, and I'm going to show you how often I have listened to Who Is She or, or uh, the mini stories, but lots and lots of times. And yet every time I go back in, I discover something else. Uh, first time I listened to it, I didn't, didn't notice certain aspects of the structure. Uh, certain words didn't stick with me. But then I see these structures and these words elsewhere in other stories or in Who Is She? And then I go back and I notice them a second time so that I'm actually able to mine this sort of beginner material, which is almost like, a, you know, after a while, it's like a Zen chant. You know, you're just used to doing it. It's like getting on a treadmill. It's not difficult to do. You just get on and do it. And uh, but I'm, I find that I pick up stuff every time I pick up something different. So. I'm not finished mining that material. I was listening to uh, the last couple of chapters of Who Is She? And there were still a lot of things there that I would like to go back in and, and really integrate into my uh, basic knowledge in Persian. So my strategy in Arabic and Persian has been a bit of a departure from my previous strategy for the reasons that just explained. Going forward, um, well, let me show you that then uh, on link, and then we will uh, talk a bit more about it. Uh, let's go share my screen. Uh, I am going to call up my, uh, okay, let's call up Arabic here. I haven't shared the screen yet, have I? Uh, wait a second here, share the screen. Okay, click screen share here. And start screen share, present to everyone. So this is my Arabic uh, page. This is how the different lessons show up, what different people are studying. But what I wanted to go to is my profile here. So I click on the profile. And uh, so if I look at the last seven days, you'll see that I wound down my Arabic because I'm going to be talking in Persian. So when I show you the Persian, you'll see the Persian has been much more active. But if I go for the last uh, three months, then these are the known words. So the number of known words has grown. Uh, it has grown. But um, if I were to show you the growth of my known words in other languages, it has been much faster. So the daily is like 300 words a day on average. Uh, if I go to um, speaking hours, you'll see again that it's been, you know, gradually getting more and more. I added on uh, tutors towards the end because I wanted to sort of improve my speaking capability. Um, let's see if I look at, uh, listening, you know, it's been pretty steady. It's been pretty steady, gradually uh, increasing the cumulative. Um, but if I go so that let's go to no known words. This is the interesting one. So my known words total 
in Arabic is 8,337. And that's actually, I started Arabic earlier. So if I look at here, you know, all time. So I started my Arabic back in December of 2017. And I was quite active for a while. And then I was traveling through here. So I stopped doing much. And then since, um, so uh, look at it, you see very busy and adding new words at the beginning, but less so here. And if I then look at my listening, uh, it kind of corresponds to that. I was very much more active through the early part of 2018 than I have been since in my Arabic. And this is because I started doing Farsi. Uh, but still, the uh, known words sort of grew like this to a total of 8,357. If I look at my check, uh, check. So I think I clicked that in the wrong spot, but let's uh, go to profile here. If I look at my check, I've done nothing the last seven days, but if I look at all time, you'll see that my check, I'm up at 66,000 known words, 66,000 known words. And those were acquired furiously at the beginning uh, and then far fewer words thereafter. And that's because there's just so many uh, words that come from Russian. I went to check after Russian. But if I look at my listening, Again, so most of my activity in Czech was all at that one spurt, but it's a brief spurt, a brief spurt. So that it just shows you that with those languages where you can read them, they're in the Latin alphabet, there's a lot of words you know, you can move pretty quickly to increase your known words total to, to a very large number. Um, also, as you get into a language, you start to quickly recognize different forms of the same words, and this all helps not the case in Persian. So if I go back to, here's where I should be changing it. Let's go and look at my Persian here. Uh, where is it? Persian, there we go. So Persian all time, I mean, I'm only at 2,500 known words. Uh, 2,500 known words. Uh, again, most of it is basically in this period in the last three months, like I've done the most adding of known words in the, oh no, sorry, this is listening. I've done most of the listening to Persian in the last three months. I had a brief period back in August when I started listening and then I left it, didn't do anything. And then in the last three months, uh, I've been working on my Persian. Uh, if I look at speaking hours, uh, you will see that most of those speaking hours, again, are in the most recent period. I mean, these are, you know, three, two hours and here, you know, double basically. Um, so that, um, you know, the fact of all that I'm speaking, like if, if I go back briefly to my, I uh, see, I haven't looked at these numbers that much, but let's go to my check. Where are we? Check, check, check. Where did check go here? Ta, 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 ta. Belarus. Oh, here we are. Check. If I go to speaking, you'll see that I started in, in uh, no, uh, December of 2011, but really did hardly any speaking until basically, I guess the summer, so six months before I was doing any significant amount of speaking, six months. Uh, whereas here in Persian, I'm speaking after two or three months, uh, even though, so if we say, you know, August 2012, I'm speaking quite a bit, August 2012, but what's my word count at uh, August 2012? August 2012, my word count is already 43,000. So, you know, uh, I, w I really didn't start speaking at all. Uh, see, here I had all these words. Uh, you know, I was at 30,000 words, I wasn't speaking. Whereas now the strategy has been, 
that uh, I wanted to speak early. The question is, if I had put the effort into adding more known words in Persian or Arabic, this would have delayed my speaking, but maybe in the long run, uh, I would have been better off doing that. Uh, the problem is that it's more difficult to do. So if I uh, take stock of what I have learned, well, first of all, going forward, I know that I'm going to put both Persian and Arabic now on the back burner. Let's look at the, uh, let's just one last peek here before we open things up. Where is the Arabic again? Portuguese, Italian. Da, 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 da. Where did the Arabic go? Oh, here we are. So the known words moves early there. And yet uh, in terms of speaking hours, you know, I guess here again, it was November where I did a lot of speaking in Arabic. And this has to do with the fact that I was going to Morocco and I wanted to practice speaking in Arabic before going to Morocco. Um, but in November of 2018, my known words in November of 2018, uh, 2018 November, you know, it's like 6,000 words. So whereas I waited to have 30,000 words to speak in Czech, I was speaking in Arabic at 6,000 words. I was speaking, I'm now speaking in Persian after 2,500 words. Uh, two things there, one, that it's harder to move forward in these languages because of the, you know, it's all new vocabulary uh, and the writing system is strange. And the second thing is that the availability of materials such as the mini stories just gives me more opportunity to work on things and to get the structure down so that uh, on the one hand, I don't want to move forward because it's tough, it's uh, hard work, and there's this availability of other material that I can stay in. So just some thoughts on that, and uh, I'd be interested in everyone's comments and, and their own views on, on what they have learned during this period. Uh, so uh, let's stop that. And here we are again. All right, now let's see what people have to say. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's go to the top here. First again, check. Mm, da, da. The last live stream, I wish it lasted the entire year. I will do some of these live streams, but I'm not going to do them three times a week. Um, now, blah, blah, blah. He has had a couple of things to do once a week. Australia, but moved to Europe. Where in Europe, last language workout. Vicino al mare, rare ultima live. È una pena che tenga che acabar. It won't akabar, but we'll just do it less frequently. Ah, uh, aloha from Texas. <laughs> Is there a native English speaker here? Yeah, good afternoon. Just want to say thank you so much for all your videos. They have helped so much in my language journey. Thank you. I sh let me tell you that every time someone says that they appreciate these videos, that it encourages them, it really makes me, uh, you know, happy. It's it's nice to be to think that what I am doing, what a but we do is helpful to other people. So I do appreciate the feedback. Anta tatakalam Arabia Jamila Jiddan. Okay, not true, but I'm working on it. Uh, your last video, Rock, you going. Arabic is good. I could understand a little bit. I am a native speaker of Arabic. Hello, blah, blah, blah. But there are more natives on language exchange learning Discord Slack chat service if you're looking to chat to someone, blah, blah, blah. Who here is drinking beer? My last question about meditation, you didn't give me an answer, but what about doing sports? Is it helpful running while listening to podcasts to the language you're learning? Okay, first of all, I don't do meditation, so I can't comment on how effective meditation is. I find that uh, running or being active while listening to podcasts, I, I have no you know, scientific proof, but I think that being active, is, it's got to be good for the brain too. It's just you're alert. It's, Energy is happening, but I have no scientific evidence of that. How have you managed to learn so many languages? Please tell me your secret. I aspire to be a polyglot. I am 14. Okay. So I, I talk about it all the time. You, you know, the way you have, you have to expose the brain to a lot of the, a lot of input in the language. There is, I've read books on the subject that our brains from a evolutionary perspective, okay, we are not so well equipped to deal with theoretical explanations. Uh, we are equipped to take in a lot of stimulus. The brain takes it in and sorts it out and creates little patterns, networks in the brain to deal with what's coming at it. 
that's what our brain has to do. We have to be able to cope in life. We have to anticipate what's going to happen. We have to, and, and so therefore exposing ourselves to a lot of content in the brain is the best way. Nothing wrong with looking at grammar. Uh, once you have enough of the language in you so that these grammar explanations deal with something that you already know. So the secret is to find a lot of content to listen and read, occasionally review grammar, follow your curiosity, uh, don't worry about how you perform, find ways to enjoy the language, and you will eventually improve. And you can do that in many different languages, and even though at times you'll confuse one, you know, with one language with another, is this an Arabic word, is it a Persian word, is it a Japanese word, you don't worry about that, you're going to make mistakes, it's possible to learn many languages, many languages, no question. Hello, Steve. Seriously, thanking you for all your help. After how many months do you stop with listening things more than once? Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to show you something, a Lucas question. Um, you have a sense that you don't want to listen more than once anymore. You want to move on. Once you're good enough, you're at that sort of intermediate stage now. You want to get into things of interest, whether it be literature, history, songs, whatever you're interested in. So you're now more listening and reading out of interest and less out of a deliberate effort to improve in the language. But I wanted to show you something. So I'm going to share my screen one more time. And the screen share. All right. So uh, now let's have a look here. I wanted to show you my playlist. Uh, so let's go to lessons here. And um, now where was I? I can never remember where I put the playlist here. Oh, here we are, playlist. Okay, so we are in check, so there's nothing there. But if we go to, uh, you know, Gujarati, I was at dinner the other night and the chef was an Ismaili who speaks Gujarati, maybe one day, who knows? So Persian. And playlist and let me point out that the playlist is very important and now you have the ability the ability to to listen to create a playlist out of any course uh do it it's very powerful so story 16 16 times um stories 1 to 15 i have listened to more often some of these stories 21 times uh, you'll just, you'll see, and obviously further on you listen less and less often, but this Nazi, I mean, this is a, 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 a tutor's report. She gives me, Nazi gives me five minutes, six minutes, four minutes of her notes of our conversation. So I've listened to these tutor reports 13 times. This is Rana, 11 times. Okay. So Nazi seven times. So here's a story, for, a mini story, 10 times. I know these later many stories last well because i haven't listened as often so uh often yeah listen often if i go to my arabic and, and I, I just wanted to make this point because i think people don't listen enough uh where did arabic go to here a green guy arabic so if i go to my playlist and uh here again you know and i started with arabic uh, 42 times less than 13. I shudder to think how many times I've listened to stories one, two, three, four, five, 40 times. Story 16, 76 times, 50 times. Look at how often I've listen, listened to these stories. The thing about having a playlist is it tracks your listening. So you have a record of how often you've listened. People don't listen enough. Uh, 63 times I've listened to this story, 63 times. Um, so, and one thing I wanted to show you again here is if you upload, say, Asimil, and, uh, oh, uh -huh. well, maybe I don't have the most recent version, or maybe it's, no, I think you can. Not sure where it is. On the, um, on the, uh, what does this say? Hmm. Uh, on the app, you can um, play the whole course, listen to the audio of the course and turn it immediately into a playlist. I think there is somewhere you can do that on the main, on the website, 
but I don't know where that is. I will have to find out. I'm sorry. Okay. Anyway, we'll, but if it isn't there, it will be soon. And it's very important, you know, make a playlist out of the audio. It tells you how often you've listened to it. And, uh, you know, it tells you what your total listening is. I often think we should have a daily thing that pops up on your mobile phone. Today, how often did I listen? How much did I listen? Uh, we need to push people into listening more, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, people may think otherwise. So that was an answer to Luca. So when do I stop doing that? When I feel like it. Uh, there's nothing more scientific than that. Uh, Steve Goat, thanks to from Brazil. Very important. I'm glad. Uh, yes. <laughs> absolutely absolutely uh, I encourage people you know I don't know what the definition of middle age is but I'm certainly past middle age uh, we will have more language corners 3,000 known words can define is the gap between those numbers that determine as far as the number of topics you can speak on or the depth you can speak about well of course Charles yes I mean you need words to discuss certain subjects uh, and to have a, a, a you'll if you listen to my Persian I'll check the time here you'll see that there's a limited number of things I can talk about uh, without having to ask the tutor every time how do you say this how do you say that how do you say this now the advantage is when I talk to my tutor and we're wandering into subjects that I don't have the vocabulary for I ask the tutor how do you say this in Arabic or Persian she says it to me makes no impression on me I don't get it like she can say it five times I won't get it but she puts that in the report so from my tutor I get a report and in the case of one of them it's a five minute recording of all the words and phrases that I either got wrong or I didn't know the word for and so now I have a lesson so yesterday for example I had my lesson then I had this five minute recording or it was actually six minutes then I listened to that recording five times while cleaning up after breakfast and cleaning up the kitchen and everything else. So I'm listening to it. I'm curious. I'm listening to it. I'm curious. Curious is good. When you're curious, then I go to the text of her uh, conversation report and I start saving words and phrases. And then I listen again slowly. This so, so your conversation with your tutor, if you wander into areas that you don't have the vocabulary for, it is an opportunity to create more input, more content that you can learn the vocabulary from. Now, uh, the word link word count depends on how inflected each language is. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So therefore, there's no absolute value to those numbers. Uh, you can't compare from one language to the next. Uh, so is it a good method to learn a language using another language which shares similarities? I don't think it matters. So, uh, you know, I can use, uh, you know, you can use English to learn Chinese. Uh, uh, it can be interesting. Like, I f yeah, actually, you know what? When I think about it, it Florian uh, Vasilev, it can be interesting. Like sometimes uh, if I'm learning a Slavic language, I like to have Russian as a reference because then you see whether the word is similar or not similar. So I, I think you can go both ways on this. After how many months of learning, do you find it easy to listen to anything that you want in Romance languages? Uh, you know, it's hard to say, but if you are already a speaker of a Romance language, then it should go fairly quickly. I find it impossible to read and listen at the same time in Chinese. When you were learning Chinese, Japanese, did you listen at the same time? No, in those days, they didn't have that kind of thing. You know, in those days, I listened, I listened, I listened. Then I would go read and read and read. We didn't have computers. Uh, so it takes a long time to get to where you can read as quickly as you can listen. So, uh, you know, it's not surprising that you find it difficult to do that. Is it possible to understand anime in Japanese after reading and listening for seven hours every day? If you read and listen seven hours a day, you'll understand a lot, a lot. You know, you'll be able to do anything in Japanese. Annyeonghaseyo. Annyeonghaseyo. Pogo isumida. Okay. Hanguge so pogo isumida. Okay. Annyeonghaseyo. Thank you for helping me learn the languages reading is comprehensive i wish i knew this when i started been learning spanish in spain the last two and a half years yeah i can't stress enough the importance of listening and reading that doesn't take away from other things that you can do you can speak 
you can um, you know look up grammar you can do all kinds of other stuff but the core the basis upon which your language skills will improve is your ability to understand your comprehension that means vocabulary and it means lots of listening and reading lots uh bah, bah, bah. spanish many stories is a good start absolutely watching anime for seven hours a day for a year i don't recommend that watching it for one hour a day so i don't watch anime uh, i thought you meant listening and reading in general so i don't know what anime involves whether there's just a lot of pictures going on or what have you tried using anki or flashcards uh i don't you do a lot of ank i don't do anki i do the five activities call them flashcards at link when I turn the page in a lesson, especially in the early stages, or if I'm reviewing a lesson, rather than reading the whole lesson through, I'll just go through the yellow words that I've saved there. But other than that, I simply don't have enough time to, to devote a half hour or an hour a day to reviewing words and phrases. I would rather spend that time reading and listening. Huh. How do you usually handle not understanding a particular statement or question in a conversation. Is it better to say something or pretend that you understand it? Uh, you know, it's hard to say. I tend to, you know, if I feel that it's not crucial to the conversation, I'll let it go, especially if I'm asking a lot of questions. However, if I think it's important, I'll ask. It depends on the conversation. If it's a conversation with a tutor, I'm more likely to ask for the explanation. If it's a conversation where we're trying to communicate about something specific and I, I feel we're kind of communicating, but I missed certain things, I'll just let it go. Is it a good way to practice speaking and listening to podcasts or many stories and make a summary of what you heard? Okay, like I don't do that kind of stuff. It's probably a good thing to do. I just am too, uh, I'm not disciplined enough to do that. So I listen, I listen, I read, I read, I don't understand, I listen again, I read again. I don't make summaries, probably a good thing to do. I don't do it. When you, mm, here, Steve, I hear people say that if you're not studying in the target language for at least one hour every day, you're not trying hard enough. Some people are legit very busy no matter how determined, Jared. Okay, you know, I think an hour a day is kind of good. One should try to do an hour a day. How do you get to an hour a day? It's listening. Listening is extremely powerful. Listening drives your language learning. Listening makes you curious because you don't understand what you're listening to. So you go and read it. And then maybe you say words and phrases if you're on link. And, and then the structure is confusing and you might look up the grammar. But listening to me, listening drives my learning. I can always find time to listen. I can listen while cleaning up in the kitchen. I can listen while exercising. I can listen in my car, listen on the train. Listening. That's why I think we should have something on the phone reminding people, listen. Listen, you can always accumulate five minutes here, 10 minutes there. You can accumulate an hour of listening. If you do the, the hour of listening, chances are you'll follow up because you won't understand it all. So you'll follow up and do the reading and, and other work that you need to do. That's why, for example, listening to the audio of a course is great because you just set it up there and you hear it. It's on your playlist. The playlist, uh, course playlists, all of this stuff, anything that facilitates listening is very good because it makes it likely that you'll get in an hour a day with the language. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, thanks, that was bugging me. When you say that you listen in the beginning 40 times, you listen to the same text many times every day or you listen first and after a few days? Okay, Lucas question. So, no, I don't listen to the same thing over and over again. You can't. The, 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 one of the sort of lines that I took out of Manfred Spitzer's book on how the brain learns is the brain needs repetition and novelty so i do lesson one understand half of it and then i go to lesson two i'm curious i want to see lesson two now even though i didn't understand lesson one i'm curious about lesson two and then i go to lesson three and lesson four and lesson five and then i go back to lesson one and then i go up to 10 and go back to lesson one and then i might do something else and then i'll come back so it's very much a matter of going back to it over and over and over again uh that's why the playlist is good so you're not and i seldom put the playlist on repeat, which you can do, so that I hear the same thing over and over and over again, because repetition and novelty. If it's just repetition, the efficiency goes down. The brain loses interest. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Those don't really help me. I don't like them. And blah, blah, blah. Uh, Is that you just said that?
yeah so more input is going to help you accumulate uh, as uh, you know acquire the language love all your videos since starting my language learning journey through i really enjoy you and your passion and perspective you are tremendously spasiba basha thank you very much <laughs> wild child namaste i want to practice okay is it okay to learn russian and swedish at the same time will this slow down my process of adopting these languages okay now i've had this experience of learning two languages i mean it works both ways on the one hand if if like i i sense like if i stayed on my arabic and only did arabic for three months i would be further ahead i really get into it you start to get a toehold like i did you know i shut down my persian for five days just focused on arabic and i noticed i improved more so there is tremendous advantage in concentrating in one however if you are curious about two languages and want to maintain that curiosity then you can try it you may find that you end up spending more time on one language than on the other. Uh, Steve, what do you think about novelty fictional languages like Klingon and High Valerian or whatever? Zero interest, zero, okay? I'm interested in languages and travel and food and culture and meeting people. I have no interest in artificial languages and I include, and despite the criticism I'm gonna get, I include in that Esperanto. That's not to say others shouldn't be interested in those things, I'm not. If that's, that doesn't interest you, I definitely suggest like watching videos and blah, blah, blah. Can't wait for you to start learning Turkish. Greetings from Venezuela. Greetings. Hey, Steve, I'm from India. I want to learn Spanish. I'm still struggling so much with it. Give me advice. Anand, get on link and use the mini stories on link. I got another question. Is it helpful learning the languages very deeply? AJ Ho taught me that because most students, unfortunately, take one chapter in one textbook after one week, move on to the next. I don't fully understand it, but you know one of the problems in any classroom environment is that the teacher controls what you learn as an independent learner and even if you're in a classroom you should move on when you feel like it you don't have to 100 percent master any chapter you curious about the next chapter you just move on go on two three four five back to one however you are motivated that's what you should be doing english is my first language and i'm too lazy to learn other languages that's fine can you explain why pronunciation is overlooked in schools? Um, various things. First of all, uh, very often in schools, the teacher is not a native speaker. So the teacher is not the best model for pronunciation. Uh, two, you know, pronunciation is a bit like grammar. You have to hear a lot of it before you have a chance of pronouncing it properly. So I think the question rather should be, why is listening comprehension not promoted more in schools? If people listened hours and uh, listen to hours and hours and hours, they would start to hear the differences in the pronunciation, and then they would have a better chance of uh, pronouncing well. Pronunciation is not something, in my opinion, that should be focused on at the beginning. I read an article from Lucas saying that the quicker you learn something, the quicker you can forget it. Would this imply that it's better to learn something over the long time rather than intensively? Well, I have tremendous respect for Luca but i don't believe that i have found the other the opposite to be true the more intensive you learn something the better you learn it you're you're burning the the, the sort of connections but you have to stay with it if maybe luca meant that if you learn a language in two months and go away and come back you'll be it'll be more difficult to recover what you have learned than if you have spent six months at the language so the point there is to make sure you put in enough time to reach sort of a critical mass in the language. Uh, but the more intensively you study, the faster you move. And I remember thinking after my Chinese learning experience 50 years ago, that if I learned the same amount of material in six months, as opposed to 12 months, I don't learn it twice as well. I learn it four times as well. So I'm a big believer in intensity in language learning. Konnichiwa. I am a huge fan. Thank you. Uh, I want to say thank you for sharing your knowledge about language learning. Your videos really help. I'm glad. That makes me very glad to hear that. <laughs> I like my glasses. Prepositions in Spanish are defeating me. Any suggestions? Uh, you know, anything in another language that is, call it strange, different, not what we're used to in our own language, is going to be difficult. I have that experience in Slavic languages. Now, month of May, I'm tooling up to go to Ukraine. I'm going to try to improve my control of K 
cases and verbs, aspects, verbs of motion, all that kind of stuff. It's difficult to create new habits. So you have to just say, okay, with enough exposure, and because the prepositions are attached to something, they're either attached to a verb or attached to a noun, save, if you're on links, save phrases, review the phrases. Um, you know, if you have saved phrases, then uh, if you're on link, then you do the activities, you can do the dictation, so you can hit those phrases. Maybe you go into link and you only save phrases with these prepositions that give you trouble. So forget about all the words you don't know, just focus on the prepositions and then go through the activities, do them in flashcard, do them in dictation where you have to, you hear the text of speech, you have to type it. Do them in multiple choice. Do them in different ways so that there's a certain amount of variety. Remember, we, we need novelty. There's a certain amount of randomness and you're reviewing the prepositions. Notice them when you listen and read. Hear them when you listen. Uh, and slowly, the brain will acquire this habit. F forget the explanations. I mean, you can review the explanations, but it's, it's one of these things that doesn't stay with you very long. You have to develop the habit. Where are we here? Prepositions. What do you think of French in action? I'm sorry, I don't know it. I'm learning Russian. Do you have a suggestion for me? Enjoy it is my only suggestion. It's a lovely language. It's a tremendous amount of literature and a tremendous amount of 19th century literature for which there are spectacular audiobooks. You can import the ebook into Link and, and just enjoy the language. And just and don't be impatient. Don't be impatient about your ability to remember different case endings, especially when speaking. Focus on comprehension and really get to the part where you understand it well, then you will be able to improve your speaking much more easily. Huh, do you start listening or reading or at the same time? It varies. Sometimes I read first, sometimes I listen first. Uh, you know, if I'm going out the door, I'll grab something to listen to that I haven't read. If I'm at home, I might decide to push forward and read something and then I listen to it and that'll be my listening for the next day. No hard and fast rule. What percentage of words should you know before you read advanced content like novels on link? Uh, it also depends on the uh, language. But uh, I think 10, 15,000, you know, I was working on advanced novels in Russian at a much lower level at a time when link was very slow and clunky. So it depends on your interest, your motivation, how difficult the language is. No hard and fast rule. Do you recommend finishing courses? We start, start many stories. No, I don't recommend finishing courses. Uh, the advantage at Link is that you can be in this for a while, then go do something else, and then come back to the mini stories. The mini stories to me is a place to start, but it's also a place that you can always go back to. And it's like a training room because it's the, it, it uses the most common verbs in the language, a lot of the good connecting words like although, because, however, on the other hand. And so it's a place to go back and refresh and review and renew, and then you can go back to stuff that you find more interesting. I'm learning Japanese, my level is lower intermediate. Should I start learning hiragana, kataka, and kanji? I don't know, you know, the way I learn, I don't know how you can learn vocabulary without being able to read. So I would definitely get into hiragana, katakana as soon as possible, and I would start learning kanji. Does it bother you when people don't care if you can speak their native language at a good level? It bothers me and I don't know why. It doesn't bother me. However well I speak, that's how well I speak. I don't do it for other people. Doesn't bother me. Did you learn the cases in Russian Czech just by reading or did you also consult grammar books? Of course I consult grammar books. I consult grammar books though for an overview of what's happening. Uh, the more familiar I am with the language, the more these explanations make sense and yet I can't remember them. So it's a combination of a lot of listening and reading so that certain phrases now start to sound in your mind and they embody the correct case and occasionally reviewing the explanations. Mr. Steve, also tried, I've always tried to learn French. I studied a week and then I stopped. Please, should I listen and read simple things and not Google on their words, whatever? Well, I mean, uh, what should people ask what they should do? Lots of listening and reading. Uh, if you, you know, look things up for sure. I mean, I devised Link in a way that once we look something up, we have a record of the fact that we looked it up because we're going to forget it. Don't rely on having looked up a word and think you're going to learn it. You won't. You'll forget it. It's, it's just an ongoing process. 
Okay, yes, I Peruvian, easy to learn languages. When I was in Cusco, uh, every, all the taxi drivers spoke, uh, what do you call it, Quechua, as well as Spanish. Very impressive. Uh, yes, it's effective to go uh, and talk to people. How hard is Japanese grammar? I didn't find it hard. Uh, ha how you increase your link quantities thousands in a short time? Okay, well, it depends on the language you're starting with. If I if I have Russian, then I can increase my vocabulary in Czech. If I have Ukrainian, I can increase my vocabulary in Polish quickly. Okay, if you have Spanish, you can increase your vocabulary in French quickly. It depends what the base language is. Is it possible to learn three languages at the same time? I've never tried it. You know, try it. Are nonfiction audio books better? It depends on your interests. Are they easier? Yes. Nonfiction, to me, is always easier than fiction. What would your advice? My, uh, you advise my cousin has been struggling with carrying on with his Spanish because he's lacking always the motivation. Well, it's hard to motivate other people, especially your cousin. Uh, you know, if, if your cousin finds something of interest in Spanish, music, whatever it might be, go for it. Otherwise, uh, leave him alone. <laughs> That's my advice. Do you think it's good to learn 100 words a day, but counting, for example, eight, eight and it's like, That's the way we count them at link. So in some languages, you pick up a lot. Uh, but it's not obvious to people that eight is the past tense of eat. It's not obvious that eaten is, uh, you know, uh, whatever they call it, form of eat. So I like to learn the different forms. Did you learn Hindi? Any tips on learning Hindi? No, but I hope to get there. I speak, Ivan Jesus says, I speak English, Spanish, Portuguese, and I'm learning Spanish. Ah, difficult, I find, well, it, there's no difference. It's just that Russian is harder because you go from English to Spanish. Okay, English is 50, 60% Latin-based words. From Spanish to Portuguese, you got all the words before you start. Now you're going into a language where there may only be 10 or 15% words that you can identify. It's just harder, but it's the same. Uh, which Chinese dialect do you think you should learn? It depends what your needs are. If you're in Hong Kong, learn Cantonese. If you're in Shanghai, you might learn Shanghainese. If you're in Taiwan, you might learn Taiwanese. Otherwise, for sure, you have to learn Mandarin. Sends me audio of the mini stories. I listen to that for hours, but it doesn't seem to help me remember. Okay, there's research showing that exercise is excellent for both depression and learning. I wouldn't doubt it. I had, what Japanese was your personal favorite? It depended on where I was, but I did listen to this series of cassette tapes from NHK, the national broadcaster in Japan, called Showa no Kiroku, which talked about the history of the Showa era with a lot of, you know, real-time news from the era. It was great. Uh, how can I learn to use the four tones in Mandarin Chinese? I can't, and it is frustrating me, and I'm not, okay. With that, I'm going to have to leave because I want to warm up a little bit for my Persian exit interview. Uh, the tones, I've said before, uh, you can look at the individual tone per word. It's hard to remember. Uh, learn them as phrases, lots of listening, and I found listening to Xiangsheng, which is these Chinese comic dialogues where the comedians exaggerate the tones, was very helpful. Uh, how can I learn you? Okay, how are the mini stories made? All right, Amir, yeah. We would love to have more mini stories. I paid a person, actually an English teacher in Japan, a Canadian woman, to write the stories. She wrote these 60 stories. I think she did a fabulous job. And then we simply translated them into other languages and had them recorded. If anybody wants to produce many stories in any language, we are interested. Okay. All right. I'm going to run now. Thank you and good luck to all. And we'll have another 90 day challenge. And uh, we'll have more of these sessions as well. Bye.